Centuripus splendidus, the mandarin fish or mandarin goby. We're going to give this a shot today. I have never tried to paint this before. There was a contest a few years ago on one of the pages on Facebook. And for, I don't even know why, I never, never competed in it. Never tried to paint it. We're going to see what we can do with this thing today. Let's paint something completely different and very cool today. Got a couple of choices. This is a bottom fish. So 3XD maybe or something a little bit deeper. In the wild it only gets to about four inches. It's a very small fish. It's an algae feeder, bottom feeder, very shy. The Pacific is probably the only place that you're gonna find it. And um, males usually develop a longer dorsal spine. But I think this three inch probably going to do the trick. So let's get this lip taped up get to work. So there have only been a couple of times that I've done saltwater fish like I think ever on this channel. It's not that often. It's normally freshwater fish. But let me know if saltwater is something that you guys want to see from time to time on this channel. Drop me a comment in the description below and I will be happy to add more salt water. They're much more vivid fish, that's for sure. Um, I love painting them. Just seem to kind of gravitate towards what people are fishing for, but for hobbyists, this might be right up your alley. So we're going to give it a go today. There are no guarantees on how this thing's going to come out. I have some ideas. As I was driving down here to the studio this morning, I'm like, well, I can use some mica. I think I'm going to start out with some black primer instead of white and then build off of that. I also have some acrylic pens and things, some different stuff than I normally use. So we are going to play around with some stuff and get our hands dirty and I hope you guys enjoy this episode. A lot of the times you guys ask if I do anything to prep the baits. Generally I'll kind of give it a once over with my hands if it feels a little residue or any kind of grease or oil I'll generally wipe it down but for most ABS plastic stuff, if you just take a dry cloth and just kind of get, because usually when you handle it, that's when you might have some issues because our, our fingertips carry some oils in them. Or if you've washed your hands and there's some soap or just a number of stuff, eating breakfast before you started painting or dinner. So a lot of reasons that there could be stuff on there. So just dry cloth on the ABS plastic. It's not like there's mold release like there are on these resin baits over here. Whole different animal. I have done some stuff with resin baits where I've kind of given a rundown of what you should be doing and, and how to prep these things properly. I talk about it in some of my updates, but if you want a more comprehensive start to finish watching me, um, let me know there too, and I'll be happy to get back into it. I am between the Bassmaster Classic, we just came back from that a couple of days ago, and then next month we've got iCast. So in between that, I'm going to try and pack you guys down with as many videos as I can. I am relatively slammed as far as bucketfuls of baits that I have to address. But in the interim, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that you guys are well taken care of too, because I miss you. I, I love teaching. We are going to start with a white primer, and then I'm going to do black on top of that. I just want that one base coat, and then we're going to cover it with black, and then we're going to start our pattern. Let's get this ventilation cranked up for you guys. I've said this before, but I will certainly, it's worth repeating. I always wear a respirator. The only time that there's an exception to that rule is when I'm talking to you guys and taking you through a tutorial like this. So wear your respirators. Just give it a light coating here, and then we're gonna immediately heat set this. I don't know what kind of blank it is. I'm not even sure where I got it. Maybe it was some of the stuff that Timmy was sending me from Crossroad. I got a couple of care packages from him last summer. And um, I'm a bit of a pack rat. I normally don't waste anything. I did um, send a lot of stuff that I knew I wasn't gonna be able to 
use an address due to my obligations now with the baby bullsheds and bullshed swim baits in the last $400 prize pack for Fishmas this past year. So there was a ton of stuff loaded into that gift giveaway. I do it every year. So yep, there's, you only got six and a half more months to go till Fishmas rolls around again this year. Now that we've got this white in here, clean that chamber a little bit. I'm gonna drop some black on this. And I think I want to try and use some fairly decent metallic paints and some iridescent, maybe even some interference. You guys are not familiar with that. I am going to acquaint you today. As I'm looking at this, you guys are looking at this on the screen. We now have a first white primer and now a jet black detail primer. But if we're looking at the mandarin fish, this is going to be a super crude drawing, not one of my finer by any means, but it's going to kind of give us an idea of what we're looking at. So on this fish, this area is blue and that's going to go under the belly on both sides. Then it looks like there's orange pretty much through most of that except for the face. The face is almost like a, a mint lemon color and then extremely light blue, pale blue on the lips. Now a lot of this is going to be detailed in after, but at least to me the most important thing to do when you're doing a complex pattern is to get the base layers right. So we're looking at a metallic blue, orange, which I'm going to use tangerine, which is a pearled color, and then a lemon green. Going from light to dark, I'm going to do my lemon green first, my orange next, and my metallic blue last. I'm going to mix on this too and probably use some reducer. Now I know we're dealing with a black primer on this, so for the very lightest part on this face right here, I'm going to bring some white back into the mix, but only on that. Everything else is going to stay true to the black primer. Just a tiny bit here. I'm going to shoot forward on this face plate so I'm not really over spraying the rest of the bait. White does have a tendency to really over spray. I'm keeping white in the chamber because this is a very pale color that's on the face of this mandarin fish. I've got fluorescent green because the key lime or the lime green, this pearl color, has got way too much yellow in it. That's not really how I want to get that yellow in there. I'm going to add it separately and I know that I have a lemon color. just have to find it. Yeah. That should be enough. All I'm going to do to that is grab a little paintbrush, kind of mix it around, get that light pale lemon yellow color mixed in 
with this fluorescent green. And I think with what little bit of white's left in that chamber, should just about nail it. I think I'm okay with that. I want to make sure that that's what's coming out. And then just add that in to the face, throat. That's not bad. I'm also going to be using fluorescent for the orange on its back too. And I might use fluorescent blue for the belly, although I'm kind of leaning towards a metallic blue. I can always drop the metallics into it after the fact, but if I can get paint that has it to begin with, it's a little bit easier. Just adding this over the back, bringing it under the tail. even strokes. I might need a second layer of this simply because this is such a dark primer on here. I want to make sure that it's even. And then I just kind of push that out a little bit heavier. I am going to give it a second coat just on the back, but I'm going to heat set in between that just to lock this first layer of orange down. And as you can see, and I hope that the camera picks this up clearly, as orange dries into black, it kind of fades in, which is why I said that we need to heat set between so that you can really see what you're dealing with. A lot of times when wet paint sits on the surface of a darker color underneath of it, kind of don't see that, but as it dries, you're going to lose that clarity in the lighter color. So you want to come back and do a second coat of this absolutely on this dark primer. And then just nice even strokes all the way back. We have two coats on the yellow. I'm going to bring in some fluorescent blue, but I'm not just going to use fluorescent blue. Kind of winging this as we go because, like I said, I've never done the pattern before. So I'm going to use fluorescent blue as a base over top of the black. Then I also want to bring in some metallic after that, which is a little bit thicker than this fluorescent. Fluorescent is not transparent or translucent paint but you generally need more coats of this. Blue will go on the black a little bit easier since it's a darker color. You just want to kind of be careful and try and stay in the areas that you've made for yourself as best you can. And get all of this stuff down. Now you don't want to throw this on here so thick that you start to leak or starts to blow all over the place. That you don't want. So we're going to heat set this. We're going to come back and do a second layer of this and then I'm going to add some metallic paint after another heat set. And this is layer number two of fluorescent blue. Light strokes, my pressure, my PSI this morning, and on the, even on these base layers, it's right around 18. Heat set.
traditionally the metallic blue, especially the Spectratex, is a little bit darker. But it is nice and shiny. It usually translates really well. Especially over top of another blue. The last thing I'm going to do is come back over and just redefine this lighter color on the face because we are going to need to differentiate between these colors as we lay in our detail. Okay, you're right. Some of you probably caught that. Instead of mixing directly in the chamber, I used the exact same one drop white, one drop fluorescent green, one drop yellow. I just did it in a mixing cup. It's the only difference. That's all. Now, if you notice in the picture you guys are seeing on the screen, there is just a little bit of purple right over top of the eye. This is Vallejo Shifters, and the color is Old Gold and Gray Violet. So we're going to add just a tiny bit of that right over top of the eye. But what I need to do is bring that pressure way down to about 10 because we just want to shoot at the edge of the eye. Both sides. Now this is the first time that I have used this and it is a really cool shift. It does exactly what it says it's going to do. It shoots from that greenish gold into a purple. It's a really good shift. So Vallejo, you win my vote of confidence. These come in kits and there's a bazillion different colors of shifters available. I don't reduce them. They don't need reduction. They shoot really well out of the airbrush. This is, as you got, if you guys are new to the channel, it's an Awada Eclipse HPCS. It's my go-to every single day. The last thing we do before we're going to get into the detail is I'm going to add to just a little bit of white, some opaque blue. Just about three drops. I want that real pale ice blue on the lips of this fish. I've already got my phone with my picture on it sitting over on the finishing desk, which is where we're going to do the detailing. Just a real super light color. Very light pressure. We're not going to put a whole lot on this. Just a couple of drops. It's very soupy, very thin. And then again, shoot at the nose away from the bait so that you don't blow your paint back across. Just get a little bit on the underside there. For the next part of the detailing, we're going to be using a couple of different things. We're going to be using some acrylic markers, some brushed acrylic ink that's water-based, and then I've got some stuff that is permanent Lumicolor and an alcohol base. All of that is fine. The one thing that I want to make sure that you guys understand is that make sure you have good flow in the tip of this pen prior to doing anything on your bait because if you have a dry tip and you try and squeeze down, you're going to scratch the paint up on what you've already done. So there are no guarantees when you go from acrylic painting to acrylic markers that your paint is going to match but since we have a darker color on the bottom and some lighter colors we should be okay so all I'm going to do as closely as I can from this point I'm going to draw some orange and blue lines throughout the back of this mandarin fish and then after that we're going to add the black lines that you see on the fish into it on the cheeks, 
we have a little bit of yellow. You guys can see these yellow spots here. I'm going to try and bring those in as well. I'm going to add some random yellow marks. And all of this stuff has got black around the outside. So that is probably the most difficult to contend with. Is making sure we get the fine detailing done and that it sort of kind of matches up on each side. You don't want to go too far beyond on one side with these dots. The Mandarin fish is a bit abstract to begin with, so just make sure that whatever you're doing try to match up as best you can. Some of you might be asking, would it be easier to use a paintbrush instead of an acrylic marker? Yes, the only issue is acrylic paint paint that's not airbrush paint is too thick and you're going to see the lines. If you reduce it, it's going to be too watered down. Airbrush paint is going to be way too thin to actually cover your base layers here without bleeding in and looking kind of weird. So the best thing that I've found are these painters. So there are upsides and downsides. If you feel your tip drying out, just grab this scrap piece of paper that you see I've got down here and get the tip wet again. Just gonna make a couple of basic lines on both sides of this fish. And again, you're not going to get a perfect color match. It's almost impossible. Just gave the bait a good heat set. One thing that I do want to do with the airbrush while I have it out still and on, just very lightly I want to come in and blend this bottom layer a little better towards the bottom. Now on the face of this bait, you're going to notice that there are some blue lines on there. So before we place our black detailing line marks, I've got a very thin, I believe this is a double zero, it is, artist brush. And we're just going to make a couple of rings 
with some metallic blue. This is Spectratex. that go here. It's even one that comes around the chin, so we're just going to run this on the lip in front of this gill plate. take this out of the cradle for the next part simply because it's going to be easier for me to manage holding it in my hand now that everything's dry. This mandarin fish is just about ready. We're going to put some eyes in. Looks like it takes about a seven millimeter. Flash. For the last part of this, we're just going to dunk it in. It's KBS Diamond Strength Clear. Getting a little bit low here in the jar. That's all right. One good dip. Well, folks, that's going to just about do it for me today. Thank you guys so much for hanging out on the channel. I hope I've been able to teach you a couple things. Get out of your comfort zone. I, I have never tried to do one of these fish before. I'm not 100% happy with it, but I am happy with the materials that I had. Um, would like to be doing this maybe entirely with an airbrush next time. I know I can get the lines really, really thin, but this is not an easy pattern to do. I had a lot of fun doing it, though. Thanks so much for hanging out on the channel. Smash that thumbs up button for me and think about subscribing. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next spray session. Cheers, and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.